Good evening everyone. See we have a, a few already waiting. It's been a while since we, we had any live streams. Um, I don't have a, a face cam. You can see my lovely face tonight. Uh, there's some bugs in the system and the computer doesn't want to recognize my main camera. But uh, the, the hand cam is working so hopefully everybody can see everything nice and clear. Uh, as usual let me know if everything is working on your side and uh, we'll get cracking uh, i see joseph joseph um, good to see you as well um, glad to do the live streams again again guys if you want any live streams to to come up just send me a message on on instagram and let me know um, any kind of flies that you want me to tie uh, just check my instagram if you see something that you fancy that you want me to tie uh, let me send me a, a message either on instagram or whatever and uh, i'll be i'll be happy to to do a live stream just i'm running a bit of out of idea on what to to show you and what you're interested to so uh, if you guys uh, feel to or you want more live streams just uh, go on the instagram and check a few flies and send me a message and if I have the gear here to make them uh, more than happy to to do a live stream Mr. Kosh how you doing Andres good to see you good to see the whole family again as you say Gunnar good to see you buddy all good all good to see that's good I'm glad it's working I got that right at least you can see my face I'm here <laughs> but the main cam I don't know uh, I think it's the the dummy battery is acting up and uh, I can't put a normal battery because it'll run out very quickly and uh, they overheat so any P how you doing I recognize you I'm not too sure about the names because they changed between your Instagram and your Facebook and your YouTube so but uh, I know who you are paddling fly how you doing uh well that's 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 pike fishing for you <laughs> yeah pike are yeah and they're there if you want to catch fish all the time just fish for trout it's easy <laughs> oh I'm, I'm 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 rubbing people the wrong way there but it is <laughs> pike are very moody and uh, if they if they fed before and you come the next day and the weather is not right well then they're just not interested so it's hard to to get them moving the glue situation i still yeah well uh it's click and collect now uh opened up since i think uh, a week now 
So I wait till the shop open. I still have a bit of glue there, so don't worry. But uh, <laughs> feel free to, if you know anybody who works for Gorilla Glue, like, you know, uh, just uh, give them a nudge. I wouldn't mind being sponsored by Gorilla Glue. Send me a few, a few packs. <laughs> but uh, we'll be okay. Apart from that, um, I don't know, as the COVID situation with you, restrictions here, we're just starting to open up. I think since um, last Monday, we are able to, to travel between counties because here we're stuck to our own county. So, yeah, uh, so for the moment, uh, we can only travel in the whole of Ireland for ourselves. Um B and B guest house are still closed. Uh, Non-essential shops are only click and collect. I think at the moment it's not even open. Uh, B and Bs uh, and the whole hotels and all that uh, are supposed to reopen if all go goes well on June the second here, but only for Irish resident. Not yet open for the summer for um, international. Uh, we're waiting to have that certificate of vaccination in place uh, because at the moment you can come, but the BNB, I am still closed. I can't open at the moment till the 2nd of June. But uh, I think once that um, certificate will be in place, you'll, you'll be able to come to Ireland. You will need your two shots, I think, on the certificate. And uh, what is it? Are they called PCR test? Uh, a negative one, and it shouldn't be older than 72 hours. If you don't have that, you'll have to quarantine for what is it now? 12 days instead of 14 days. So if you want to come and fish for a week, uh, just keep an eye out whenever they they get that um, European thing on the road, and uh, everybody should. Um, should be okay to travel but for the moment no it's no travel i think uh, it should come in place unfortunately we're going to miss most of the summer tourism uh, so hopefully august maybe they'll have that if they move their arses uh, we'll have that in place so hopefully july maybe july at the best i think but uh, june definitely not it'll be just for irish people our resident of ireland and uh, it'll be yeah august till we have that uh, till everybody in Europe get their act together and we can get something that coordinates between all the countries. So, yeah, no work for the moment still for me. So, trying to keep myself busy. At least the, the weather is not too bad. I kind of showery at the moment, uh, milder. That cold spell is gone. The pike are, they're, they're feeding here at the moment. So, it's good to see. As you saw, maybe on the last videos, they, they had a spell where they were sitting on the bottom because they had quite a few lice on their, on their, on their belly. So, but I think they, they should start to get moving again, like the weather is not looking too bad. I'll be able to go out fishing. Ministry of Fly, how you doing? Dirk, how you doing too? Thanks, thanks all for coming again. Uh, it was good. Thanks for the comment on the last video as well. I'm happy you enjoyed that a kind of... a a new way that I'm, I'm vlogging uh, give you a more relaxing uh, way to watch the fishing and then a little explaining at the end so that's the way to go so tonight 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 where we're we tying we're tying the hamster tonight um, that came uh, I think it's one of the client of mine said it looked like a hamster so we called it a hamster and he kind of stayed stayed stuck with us uh, it's a fly that came quite a few years ago for me uh, because when I started fly fishing for pike there was absolutely bugger all on the internet you couldn't find no flies for pike absolutely it was really uh, a desert out there uh, the only inspiration that I used to have was a saltwater pattern and a kind of exotic pattern as well so 38 hooked and lost three followers well i wouldn't call that horrible 38 uh fish hooking it's still a good day to me like horrible is when you get absolutely nothing <laughs> so it's not too bad uh yeah it's a good session in my book 38 even if you hook them and lost them uh it's a bit heartbreaking at times but uh, it's still a good session you managed to get some fish moving so yeah coming back to the uh, the hamster, like I said, uh, hamsters were primarily um, 
I had that. Um, the inspiration came on Dorado flies, uh, fishing for Dorados. And see if I can show you that on the screen. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. I'll do a screen share there. Give me a second. All right. Okay. So there you are. You have mainly all Dorado flies. This is one of the classic ones. There's many different types of Dorados, but the one that uh, stuck with me was this one on the right up here, the black one. And as you can see, just a simple feather at the back and a bit of schlappen and the bucktail a bit of flash if you want and the particularity of that fly you see there is dumbbells on top of the hook here and uh, you get a little trimmed bucktail just at the back of the dumbbells uh, let's see another one pretty similar here again so the nice thing that you have is that you get uh, a nice buoyancy neutral buoyancy between the flotability of the bucktail and then the dumbbell uh, it's not a fly that will sink too fast or float too much um, when you manage to get the two components right you get a nice nice hovering swim if you know what i mean so the only difference that i liked uh, that i made on that fly is that um, while i was tying this fly uh, imitating the these patterns i went um, as you can see there the bucktail stopped just on the eye so i just said why not finishing and pushing the bucktail at the front just for an aesthetic reason and uh, then these these are kind of the original that i started tying as you can see just schlappens a little bit of marabou at the back uh, which is not great for pike because it doesn't last long it's nice to see on pictures but uh, for pike it's a little bit of a pain uh, the dumbbell eye and then the trimmed bucktail head making them looking like hamsters uh, so that was the first version and then I wanted to make something a little bit bigger for pike and then I came up with this one here uh, slightly different with a little bit more hanging time this one uh, the main change that I went was uh, basically I changed the, the heavy dumbbell eyes for the uh, I think they call sea eyes from airline. They are aluminium ones. Uh, I'll show you them in a minute. So they are fairly light. Um, they weigh a little bit, but they are quite light for what they are. So I really like these ones and they're big as well. So you can put a, a big eye in it if you're a believer of uh, that trigger point that the eye brings. So you get you can put a nice eye on the on those these ones uh, that I use. Uh, you can put uh, an eight millimeter eye on them. So this is an articulated fly. Uh, basically, you get the usual 35 mil shank here at the front, and then at the back around here you get the six nut hook. Bit of flash, bit of Congo hair at the back, uh, and then we start with bucktail mixing buck layers of bucktail with flash, and then we finish. Uh, with bucktail at the front and uh, a little bit of rubber uh, rubber legs sorry just at the back of the of the eye just for that little extra movement again so that's basically um, the there we are that's basically where uh, the the id came from of that fly uh, i wasn't looking at the few comments there give me a second i'll catch you back guys uh, tut, 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 tut. lk lk how you doing laurent bienvenue so that was basically yeah the 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 start of that of that uh, hamster fly so uh, caught me many many pike many good pike so it's a it's a fly that i kept tying that uh, i don't use much uh, anymore i don't know why um i kind of i kind of went more with the with the flashers because they are like kind of, of a sure bet they always they seem to work i always seem to catch fish with those flashers uh, and they're quickly tied easy to tie uh, the, the hamsters are, are a little bit more lengthy lengthy to tie but uh, if you have nothing to do and uh, you're by the fire in the winter or in close season it's a good play to to get tying so uh, yeah any questions i'll answer them and we'll start uh, we'll start that tie again while i'm here 
thanks again for all the members uh really really appreciated that that membership thing because it's kind of a, a nice it doesn't bring much but it brings a little bit to the channel even if youtube now decided to take 30 percent of the of the of the donation and everything but that's the way it works uh but uh, thanks again for the donations guys uh, like i said the last uh, video i thought i was not going to make it because my computer would not start for some reason uh it's a what is it now 10 10 12 years old mac um and it does not like 4k basically he's just um yeah has a bad allergy to 4k especially with the with the storage so but i managed to bring him back to life and uh, it seems to be working so for fingers crossed i can still edit uh, some extra videos coming i have quite i have a few uh, planned up and more of these uh, vlog types are coming so yeah thank you very much guys uh, as usual i appreciate a lot the all the support you're giving me so uh usual uh, we're gonna start that fly no surprise with the hook i still go with the the good old sakuma menta extra on six zero just because it's a decent hook and it's a easy cheap hook uh, Yes, the, definitely you can tie that fly uh, instead of using bucktail at the front for the head. You can just put synthetic and uh, stack Congo hair and trim. It's uh, definitely a lot easier, but it's going to sink a little bit faster. So it's not going to be the same. But if you want that fly to, to sink faster, if you want to fish deeper water, you can definitely change the, change the bucktail for some Congo hair or synthetic, whatever synthetic you use. And uh, you'll have... Uh, the same looking fly just bear in mind it will sink a little bit more um, another particularity of that fly is because i put the the shank at the front you do get uh, a lot more um, uh, you get that hinge effect so you get a bit more of a jerk jerk bait style uh fluke bait style on the pose so the fly tends to to turn right and left or go up and down it depends on the the way you you strip and the way it goes in the water uh, so it's nice nice uh, movement on that fly i really like it uh, I'm, I'm a big fan of uh, uh, head articulation for my, for my flies more than the the have an articulated tail uh, not talking about the game changers because they are completely uh, in a different uh, category but um, you get uh, sometimes uh, ties where you put the articulation behind and just have the tail articulating at the back but uh, i'm more of a fan uh, for pike at the front uh, i find you get more of a of that hinge effect and uh, that jerk bait fluke bait if you know what i mean so yeah let's get started just refill my thread so i have loads of threads oh usual a nice base Scissors. Okay, start with a little bit of Congo hair for the tail. So this one, color wise, um i have you know i really like the, the 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 kind of earthy natural colors so i have some lovely rust rust bucktail there that's i really like that one uh, there's something with irish pike and the, the they really like anything that's kind of coppery uh tan coppers i really like using these these colors here uh yellow and everything around that area uh, so we're going to do the the top i'm going to do one in two colors so you can see how uh, i do two colors so we do i'm going to do the top with this uh, rust root beer and uh, for the belly um yeah let's let, let's have a boat uh, i have some nice fluorescent red nice punch there or we can do a more natural olive so yeah just get voting who wants olive who wants fluoro red so I'll start with a little bit of Congo, 
I would uh, say I have about maybe half a pencil thick in thickness there. This is the only bit we're going to put just to create movement and a little bit of support for the flash. Hi Chris, how you doing? Thanks for joining. I'll try to move the camera so you guys can see a little bit more to the front. There you go. A little bit up. Get you seasick. All right. So the usual tie on the top. Okay. And then the front I divide it in two, two equal parts, and I bring them on the side. Push them slightly below. And then secure. So that's basically our, our tail and the support for the for the flash. Olive. Okay, we got one olive. Olive, two olive, three olive with red gills. Oh, easy now. That's getting too fancy. <laughs> Actually, we can put the accent on the with the rubber legs. I have some nice uh, fluoro legs here. I had some natural ones, but we can change. All right, olive it is then. All right, flash the usual. You know me, big fan of the northern flash. This is a good color, perfect for the waters here. You have a bit of gold, copper, silver. And that's fantastic combination there. Take a nice, nice hank. I just want to pull them a bit. You don't want any too many straight lines. Try to have a more natural one. Over the top. Push it down and spread it out. Use your thumb. In the front, we're going to wrap it down all around. Pinch them down. And secure that. All right. So much easy, easy to go, simple. Now we're going to go and we'll go with the bucktail. So for the back of the fly, I like to use the the top part of the bucktail. Okay, it's the less hollow one. Uh, and then for the for the head, as we go to the front, we're going to use the, the base, which is a lot more hollow and uh, it will make things easy. It will make it the fly float a little bit more. And uh, when you make uh, you want that uh, bucktail to flare to flare up, it will be a lot easier with the bottom hair than the top. So a uh, little off topic, a uh, very persistent coil in my Rio Creek fly line when you wash stretch. Extra, uh, good tip stretching. Uh, well, uh, is I'm not familiar with Rio Creek. Is it uh, a brand or is it a uh, Rio? And it's the 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 name of the line is the Creek Fly Line from Rio. Um, because I tell you what, if it is Rio, I'm not a fan of Rio lines. I've been over the years fairly disappointed with it. I know some people have been lucky with Rio and they they had a good run with them. But uh, I only had bad times with Rio, uh, cracked lines after cracked lines, and um, yeah, just not happy with them. Uh, great profile, I mean, uh, the profile that they have are fantastic, but uh, we talked that, about that before. I just, oh man, I just had so much trouble with Rio. Um, yeah, persistent coil. 
yeah, you stretched it and all. I don't, it's hard to know. Like, uh, sometimes what can help these lines is just, uh, uh, but you already stretched it. Um, Creek from Rio, yeah. Like I said, I, I am not a fan, a big fan of Rio. Um, expensive and uh, in my eyes they just don't last um, definitely um, airflow or go with uh, like i said lately i've been fishing for quite a bit i've been fishing the scientific angler and i'm super pleased with them really like them lines good evening trevor um, sometimes coils when they coil uh, you get that when you float tube fishing when you're short casting uh, it creates coils in your line uh, usually a good thing to do uh, to get rid of this coil is take away your fly cast out all the line in the water and uh, troll it for for uh, pff, quite a, f a few meters just to let that fly in the water just to uncoil and come back to our straight normal straightness if you know what I mean uh, but take the fly away and just let all the line out in the water and just paddle or uh, flap about and, and troll a little bit yeah usually uh, like LK said uh, th these lines as well uh, if they're uh get a little bit cold they, they tend to become kind of stiff and uh, the, they start to get a, a lot of a memory uh, which i don't understand because sometimes these lines are sold as cold water so i don't i don't know why they sell them as cold water when you need 20 degrees for them to to um <laughs> to be efficient and be supple so it's definitely hard irish pike how you doing terry comment ça va terry a pleasure to voir. Um, Thierry, another good client to the lodge. I haven't seen him in a while, but it's good. He found the, he found the stream. So, hey Thierry, good to see you. So, start. I'm going to start the back. I'm not going to do uh, two layers of colors. I'm just going to start with uh, the rust. And then once we're going to arrive to the belly, to the front of the fly, we're going to start uh, alternating the colors. So... Bucktail, so tip of the of the tail. So first one, we're gonna tie it normal. We're not gonna reverse tie right away, just to give us a nice bit of uh, profile to the fly. So make sure bucktail. Always clean, make sure you get rid of all this hair on the inside. Roll that and have that all around. Squeeze it at the bottom. There you go. So like I say, I do not want to reverse tie right away. I just want a low profile for the back of the tail. Okay, now we can add a little bit of flash. I'm gonna now not too much now, okay, just uh what do I put there but one, two, three, four, five, yeah, half a dozen strand. don't want it overloading flash now. Okay, and now we're going to do one reverse tie at the front. It's going to give us a little bit more volume. But fly lines, yeah, I know when, when they get cold, they become like, like super stiff and they, they can be a right pain in the hole. Oh, 
All right, I suppose all you guys know how to reverse tie. There's plenty of videos out there. Make sure it's all around. That's the beauty of Bocktail is that it's material you don't have to overdo it or put too much. So make sure you have it spread nicely all around the hook. Singe it a bit. All right. Now you can use a pen or fancy reverse tools but I've been using my fingers all the time and it works. But if you want to use a reverse tool, you can. What I don't like with the reverse tool is that when you push, you just can't really see uh, much. Everything is entrapped in the tool. Uh, I have a, more, a better feeling with my fingers when I do that. Take your time. That's it. Very happy with that. As usual, we're going to build up a little bump of thread at the front till you get the flare that you want. That's about okay. I like that. Okay, at that stage, we kind of finished the, the the hook size, the hook side. You see, it's fairly fairly simple. Like I don't I don't complicate too much when I do these things. Hey, Julian, good to see you. All right. Now for the back, for the side, I like to put um, now uh, a couple of. Yeah, there they are. Lateral scales. Scales. Uh, these are orange. I put one on each side. I kind of go just the length, just up to the back of the of the fly, just before the end of the tail. Uh, the thread, uh, Laurent, it's uh, the GSP gel spoon, and it's uh, this one, 150D, and it's the one I made the video about. It's the, the German one, Schnusch, Schnusch, no PC. Uh, sorry, I'm really bad at German, uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, 1000 meter for 19 euros. So can go on that website. Sometimes uh, it doesn't have uh, it doesn't have all the size in stock because I suppose it probably mostly come from from China. I'd say the 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 raw material and uh, since the COVID, like all the supply chain on on all sorts of material is fairly disrupted nowadays. Like so. But keep your eye out on that website, and uh, usually when when it comes back in stock, he he puts them up for you. Now right, we finish that. Um, why do I prefer Congo hair instead of Schlappen? Uh, you can put Schlappens if you want. Uh, the only thing is that uh, this is uh, a lot dur more durable. You will keep that fly because it's uh, it's a length well more lengthy kind of tie, a more complex tie. Uh, I want to keep it in my box for quite some time, and uh, usually Schlappens, uh, yeah, they they usually get. Um, 
bit enough and, and uh, they don't last as long as, as, as the, the Congo hair would. Uh, that's the only reason, basically. Uh, if I would put schlappen, I would definitely put uh, at least four to six schlappen at the back. So you have a bit of a reserve uh, for your fly to work. So definitely uh, double the, the schlappen, triple the schlappens, uh, put uh, two on each side or three on each side. Uh, just for your fly to last a little bit longer because it's if you only put two and you, you get chewed one you only have one left and uh, uh, once that one is gone it's uh, it's a bit it's a bit uh, disheartening to have spent all that time working on a fly and uh, it's just basically gone and it's not working so that that's why uh, on these on these bigger ones I'll use uh, I'll use Congo hair instead of schlappens but on the single hook one which is basically the the base the base one like i showed you uh let me see i'll go back to the screen capture yeah these ones uh, these are on single hook these i tie with schlappens uh yeah four schlappens and then uh, i just put a little bit here a little bit of marabou and then the bucktail at the front and these are tied on the on just on a single six knot sakuma menta and uh yeah, yeah, you can put schlappens like that, but they don't last as long. That's the only problem. Uh, you're not going to have them for as long. Uh, Pascal, thank you for the donation. Uh, thanks again, guys. Merci, Pascal. As usual, if you want to help and support the channel, uh, you can buy me a beer down there. Uh, support me uh, the other side. Down here. You can buy me a beer or a six pack or whatever. So thank you very much, guys. So got the first part done. Now we're going to move to the head. So the head we have. This is. Uh, don't want to say any stupid things. This is actually a 40 mil shank. These are the one I didn't make that one. I still have quite a lot from Flymen. These are the big game shanks. So that works perfect. All right, shanks. And we're going to move all that at the back. And clip our shank. Yeah, clip and clip that and keep it nice and tidy. Now we're going to stick the eyes first, so like that you have an idea how far to tie. So where did I put these eyes? Oh, here they are. So these are the the aluminium ones. Let's see if you can see them a little bit better. So sorry for my hands there. They're a bit munch from the last piking session, so it's a good session when your hands are like that. So these are aluminium ones. They're from Airline. I think they are the the CIs they're called because uh, I don't know uh, aluminium. They won't rust probably. But the advantage is that you get a really big dumbbell for very little weight. So I like I like this one. So you can. I already stuck eight millimeter eyes on it, and I really like those. Very durable dumbbells and light. So basically, you see on the on the shank here where it stops, where the overloop stops here. We're going to tie it just just at the end here on top. You want a fair bit of of room well that's the problem with this shank sometimes you get a the end bit of the of the wire sometimes is a little bit sharp the way it's cut I'll just cut my my line there start again so you want to get have a little bit of room at the front just to, to have enough room to finish 
and put the oh thank you new supporter i don't know who it is but it says new supporter thank you very much for the beers buddy thanks again I'm going to wrap that nice and tight. Figure eight. And one thing you can do for, for dumbbells as well is when you apply the glue, you can do another thing. Aluminium CI is going to thank you for. And I think these ones are the nine and a half mil I have because the, the inside is uh, for eight mil eyes. So that's definitely the one. Thank you for the specs. I'm very bad with specs. <laughs> but uh, that's the one. So the one here are definitely the, the nine and a half mil that I'm using. And I really like them. So... One thing you can do is when you tie these dumbbells, you can put some glue on the on the tread itself. Once you once you wrapped your your tread, quite a few wraps, you can finish off with some glue on the tread. Put a good bit of glue on the tread, and then that should not move at all. Make sure it's nice and straight with your with the nose of your shank that looks good and then a bit more glue just to secure everything good evening doc good to see you thank you all right let that glue dry now we're going to start the, the mix. So you guys went for olive, we go for olive. Olive belly. Boy, that one stink. Sometimes when you get these new bucktails, you're surprised, like it's like opening a, a nappy, like, oh, this one really stinks. Whew. All right, we're going to do top and bottom. So I'm starting to move down uh, the bucktail. We use the, the top of the bucktail for the tail and I'm moving to the head. I'm starting to go kind of midway through the bucktail. This one snapped, but I'll give you an idea. That was the full bucktail like that. We use this part for the front. And now I'm starting to move more towards the center of the bucktail. And then when we're over the head, we go right at the bottom. Oh, Irish Pike, you you give me the, the beers. Thank you. Merci, merci. C'est gentil. All right. Now for this now. We're going to have to pinch that bucktail because we don't want to spin it all around. Because we're doing a two layer. So we need to leave it in place. So I'm going to put it here, right here. I'm not going to reverse tie because it's going to start flaring that bucktail. So what you want to do is put it on top, grab at the bottom and bring it up to the top and pinch it okay because you don't want that bucktail to to go under you want to keep it on top of the hook so pinch at the bottom of the hook and bring it up to the top and when you're going to singe it and pull on that on that thread it's going to stay at the top if it's moved you can push him back pinch it make sure it stays somehow at the top we don't want that to to go all around the fly leave some room for the for the belly tidy up a bit all right now we go for the for the olive 
Same length, same amount of bucktail. Now remember with bucktail, less is more as usual, don't go crazy. And we go right at the bottom. Same thing, pinch it, and pull on that thread. Now you can look if you're happy with the result, if it meets properly. If, you, if it doesn't meet, you can pinch it, pinch the two colors together, bring them together. Well, that's good. Happy with that. Tidy up. Perfect. Now we're going to keep on putting a bit of flash. Go back again. About six, six strands. Now we have enough flash at the tail for to excite, excite the pike and the lateral scale. The flash that I put at the front of the fly, I like to leave it on the top of the fly, uh, purely for my own pleasure. <laughs> it's um, I sometimes fish this fly on in intermediate or even sometimes on the floating line, and uh, it gives me um, a good visual. Uh, I can see the fly from far away, having the flash uh, on the top. So most of the flash now is mostly for, for my own pleasure. So I can see that fly moving from, from a greater distance. And if you, if you fish that fly uh, just subsurface or close to the surface, usually the pike will come from underneath to grab them. Uh, so most of the flash that we put at the tail and uh, the lateral scale uh, would, be, would be good for the, for the pike to see. Some voodoo black magic. Excellent. I don't know that. I'm going to cover all just the, the rusty part of the fly. I'm not going to put flash on the on the belly. there all right getting there now um, keep on going so now we're nearly at the head I'm going to put one more layer a very light one and uh, then we're going to start building up that head Thank you for the beer again, new supporter. I don't know why it's not giving names, but uh, it's a new supporter. So thank you very much. It is, as usual, greatly appreciated. Now, hopefully the weather is opening up because I still have that video I promised you guys. I, uh, uh, merci, Laurent. C'est gentil. Thanks, Le LK, for the donation. Uh, I'm still have that video how to how do i approach a lake that i never fished so that's coming up i did not forget about that one but just i'm i'm waiting for for a slightly better weather because i want to camp the night on that lake and uh, i want to spend two days on that place and i don't want to to be soaked i want to have better, good condition for filming as well because that's another another important thing all right same thing don't overdo it a little bit of bucktail and a little bit of olive
pinch it so it all meets at the center uh, we're good here that's good so now before we attack the head I'm just gonna put the the few rubber legs at the back of the eyes so let's have another vote I have some um, kind of a pumpkin and orange legs um, and I have some simple stripy orange one uh, these ones are the the magnum predator uh, legs from airline as well I like them because they are thicker than your normal uh, bass legs and the normal crazy legs that you find so they are they're a little bit wider so they, they move a little bit more and uh, they, they tend to resist a little bit more to the pike as well they don't seem to be cut off as much so that's the the magnum predator legs so what do you think where do we go we go for these ones or the orange one what do you guys want I have my idea, but see what you want. Da, da, da. No votes. Go for the natural one then. Mix it up. Orange, orange. Okay. Okay. Everybody's for the orange. You know what? I'm going to mix it up. You guys like orange. Let's go for orange. Give it a nice punch. So that's one leg I cut in two. So now I have two legs. It's going to be two and two. So, so I cut one full one. On that full one I cut in two. Stay here. All right, I'm gonna do three. I'm gonna do two orange and one, I think this is the kind of a pumpkin one. Let's mix it up. So these have to kind of go, push them as much as you can on the inside of the eye. So we're gonna to try to put them right in there and squeeze them right in here. because we're gonna have to, to trim after the, the head and uh, sometimes these legs, they can be a right pain in the butt if they're in the way when you're trimming the bucktail. Now take your time and make sure it's kind of a halfway. Okay, happy with this one. Do the other one on the side. So. Mm -hmm. Stay here. Well, you don't see too many pike flies with rubber legs. You see a lot of uh, bass flies and large mouth small mouth bass but rubber legs do work wonders for pike as well they give you that extra movement and uh, they do work too uh, like i said they're not often used but they should be they should be used a little bit more often all right they seem to be okay here Okay, now we're going to start the head. 
So now we're going to go lower down again. You feel it anyway. You should you should start to to feel if you if you know your bucktail and uh, you used to tie with bucktail, you you will know uh, when the hair start to get hollow. You feel a difference uh, when you when you rub them together. They start to get a little bit thicker. So we'll start to look for the for the ones that are starting to get hollow. And uh, again, we're going to start with the rust at the top. So now the way I'm going to tie this, I'm going to put the thread a little bit back. I'm going to tie at the like we're doing for the body. We're going to we want that front to flare up as well and start forming the head. So this is kind of this part's going to blend with the rest of the fly here and this is going to start creating the the base of our head. Like that. Don't be afraid to push that under the eye, singe that as much under the eye, because you see now that that hair is pushing forward here, and that's kind of important because when we're going to bring on the the front, they're going to start meeting together. If you don't push it tight enough, you're going to have a blank space here at the top, and it's not going to look as nice when you be looking at your fly. It's it's going to be you're going to have a nice hollow patch there, which is not that nice. Um, if you didn't put too much you can always put a little pinch and stick the pinch right into that gap in here. But if you put enough at the front you should be okay. Well that's loud. Okay now we go for the, the, the olive. So spread out. Spread them legs. That's what she said. And then we go with the olive. Again, same amount for the olive. I do about two loose, two, three loose wraps. Okay, when you have it, singe it down. Oh, there's nothing sexier to see a bucktail flaring like that, huh? Okay, now we're gonna bring to the front the thread in front of the eye. So now what we're going to need to do is make sure that we don't leave a gap now. So that's basically uh, what you see on those uh, Dorado flies. That's uh, mostly that's they start trimming them like this. Um, but I just wanted, I don't know, for aesthetic reason more than anything else, have a, a bucktail coming right up to the front. So it looks a little bit nicer, funkier. So now we're going to start again and we keep going with the front so I'm right at the base of the bucktail so when you get at the base of the bucktail be careful because that's where you have all these little inner hairs in there so you can brush them out these ones don't have too much so it's okay uh, they're very abrasive and uh, they're a pain in the ass because they can, if you don't have a, a thread strong enough, they, they can simply really cut through your thread. So, uh, thank you, Gunner. You're, you're, you're a gent. Thank you for your dono, buddy. Pity you live so far. We we'll, should make a collab together. <laughs> Maybe I'll, I'll travel whenever we can travel again. Or you can come to Ireland. That'll be a good trip. So, all right, now we're going to try to fill that gap. All right, so we're going to try to push that bucktail as tight under that dumbbell as possible. Okay, so for this, be a little bit more generous with your bucktail. We see uh, that clump is a little bit thicker. 
okay and I'm gonna tie it kind of a the usual leave a bit more that's gonna be trimmed now anyway because the color that's mostly gonna stay and we're gonna start trimming from the front here so I'm gonna put that right at the front of the eye so before you do that make sure that your your thread is way as close to the eye as possible okay don't have your thread sitting at the front bring it really really at the base of those eyes now we're going to push that make sure it goes right in there so one loose two loose three loose and we'll push it in get it stuck right in there Sometimes you can still have a little bit of a gap here. We just need to push all that in. It's a bit like packing deer hair and now you're, you're nearly at the same as building a bass bug. It's just that you don't want too much hair not compacted enough because it's just not going to look nice with that with a dumbbell eye sticking. The bottom is okay because it's uh, it's not as a challenge to fill that gap at the bottom than it is at the front, at the top of the eye. So do the same here. Push everything back. Try to get all that tamed. Alright, now we're going to squeeze a little bit. A bit more room for one more and we should be done. bit more olive I walk your thread through the, the hair without trapping them and bring them all together pinch it It's not looking bad. What do you mean my fly looks like a cock? It's a hamster. <laughs> Maybe it does look like a cock a bit. All right. Bring all that back. Happy with it. It's kind of right where we want it and let's we finish that we are trapping too many hairs I try to get a clean clean whip finish that's good for me all right so we're going to trim up to the eyes okay we're not going to trim at the back uh, definitely don't want to cut these legs so basically we're just going to trim what we put at the front of the eyes so usual I like to put the base of the scissors on the on the shank or the eye of the hook and uh, roughly about a 45 degree all around like that it's good to start even with a bigger angle and 
it's better to cut little because if you cut too much then it's really hard to you can't bring it back to its former glory like so just go easy now the only thing is you get that uh, 45 degree angle to get a nice cone shape but you're gonna have to come a little bit flatter around the eyes okay just to cut down and reveal the eyes I could do that with a razor blade if you're if you're good with a razor blade, but I'm not that great with a razor blade. I'm a lot better with a pair of scissors. I can see what I'm doing. And I can go gradually. A little bit tighter to the eye here. So it kind of pops out. Nearly there, guys. Go around the rubber legs now, just underneath. Take your time for that. Pull the rubber legs away. Make sure of your position of your scissors before you cut. There's nothing worse to cut these rubber legs. You do not want to do that. I think we're nearly there. A bit more to the top here. I start to look the way I like it. Okay. I'm fairly happy with that. There's always anyway when you when you start trimming a, a fly if it's synthetic or bucktail you're never happy with the first trim anyway, so you'll probably go back again after looking at it. So you see, you have a kind of a flat profile on the sides where the eyes are. But it's not completely stacked uh, bucktail, like I said, I would say a, um, uh, a deer fly bug. Uh, I didn't squeeze it really hard. I still want water to get in the between because it is a fly that will sink. But basically that's, that's the big hamster. Get the belly, belly side. 
some good movement on the tail get that synthetic tail and then all the bucktail at the front that will hold that fly high up in the water and then the movement of these rubber legs once the the bucktail gets wet it's going to start forming the shape of the fly and uh, these rubber legs will start popping and, and and wobbling about they're a little bit mixed with the bucktail at the moment but once that fly gets wet a few times it's going to be completely a different uh, looking fly like any bucktail fly that you tie anyway there a few more a few touch up here Yeah, tend tend to have maybe a little bit flatter, a little bit tighter on the belly, not as much of a aggressive angle as the head. That's about it. Simple. Probably have Peter after you after tying that, especially if you start fishing for pike. But then you get you get that that nice head on a pivot. That's that's what I really like for pike flies and the ability of having that that pivot on this type of flies. Uh, the hanging time and the fact that that fly is gonna jerk right and left is a real is a real winner for pike they absolutely love that kind of swim uh, when i used to fish lures a lot i was a big big fan of jerk bait uh, simply because they, they work so well like they really imitate a fish uh, that's that's in trouble or that's dying that's definitely not swimming normally so see so you can still see a little bit of a gap at the top i could have put a little bit more at the back of the eye but it's not it's not uh, too bad I'm fairly happy with that. Um, again, flash at the back, goes all around, so the pike will see that no problem. And then uh, flash at the top just for for the angler, so you can see that fly from, from a good distance, especially if you have a little bit of light. And um, yeah, that, that, that fly will move a lot, a lot of water as well. Like so. so there you go, guys. That's basically the... The hamster or the cock, whatever you want to call it. It's up to you. I'm not fussy. <laughs> so, yeah. It's funny because I haven't fished, like I said, this fly for a long time. I've been kind of lazy tying my flies for my own personal self. Um, I've been tying easy flies, like I said, uh, mostly flashers because they do work. I catch crap loads of, of pike at the moment. Um, like the last uh, video, I went out and... Um, uh, they, they didn't want any game changers or any fancy flies or t-bones or uh, and I just put a flasher and uh, I had pike right away quite so it's um it's a fl fly that catches fish all the time but um yeah this one uh, I fished it a lot when I started tying those and I caught me ton of fish like and good fish as well so um uh, yeah I might start fishing again with it uh, I'll let you know I'll probably go in my box this one so, so there you go nice make sure you get that flat profile so you get that nice side to side movement okay so clip it tight to the eyes on the side okay and then a nice 45 degree at the top and a little bit less at the bottom just for the for the for the throat well, I definitely like those those sea eyes check your tackle shop your local tackle shop and uh, you find you find them most most places like but they're really good like i really like them thanks for the comment guys really appreciate it um thanks again for the donations tonight as usual very appreciated because they go towards um filming gear i'm sorted for fly fishing gear but uh uh, filming gear yeah there's always something breaking on <laughs> things like that or you're out of out of uh, you need something different and 4k and so but i do enjoy doing them so making them for you and um, 
yeah so if you have any question fire away boys and uh, if not uh, we'll start see you next time again guys if you want other streams uh, check the instagram if you have a fly that kind of uh, tickles your fancy note it uh, send me a message on it tag me on the on on the picture and uh, i'll be more than happy to do a stream about it so uh, because I, I don't really know what to bring you uh, as time goes so I know there's uh, guys that want to know different flies uh, because I, I never really tie the exact same fly uh, I'm, like I said I'm not a commercial tire so I don't rigorously tie the same um, the one that I tie mostly the same would be like the, the flasher because it's kind of a my bread and butter fly this one for catching fish and for giving to client to catch fish but uh, if you look on my Instagram, like most flies are, are different from one to the next. Like uh, I get bored and I don't like retying the same um, the same type of fly. So I like either way to tweak them, change them or tie something different. So I arrive, I think I have 4000 posts on that Instagram and most of flies have very little uh, repeat on it. Uh, so there there is a big wide choice of, of different flies so if you want uh, another stream i'm happy to make them at the moment i have time i'm still not working uh, things will change coming september because i'll be full back at work well i'm hoping so because i start to need a bit of money now coming in because it's been a year and a half without work and it's getting a pain that covid so uh, yeah if you want more streams coming up Get onto my Instagram and tag me on some of the flies that you want. That's what I can't remember who asked for this one, but I was more than happy to do it. And uh, yeah, give me some inspiration, guys. Uh, go in the, on the Instagram and tag me on some fly pics and I'll do them for you. So if you're happy, we'll give it a knock for tonight. Uh, I probably will do one for top water flies because it's going to be the time of the year. So um like i said a uh, top water fly i'm a bit old school so I'll, I'll 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 tie them on normal hooks but uh uh we'll see what we do um so thanks again boys oh, i'm glad i make you friday mr kosh and uh it's good now i'm glad to do that i'm happy that uh, you boys enjoyed the streams so frogs on the tube why do you want it on the tube Ugh, I hate tubes. <laughs> I'm allergic to tubes, sorry. <laughs> I never like tube flies. Um, but uh, I think I think that the what I like what I don't like about the tube fly is the 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 restriction of movement that you have because of the leader the leader going through the tube. Uh, I strongly miss, like I said, I'm a huge fan of articulation at the front for pike flies. And I think when you, you have a tube, uh, you restrict that side to side movement that uh, basically a, a fast touch will give you at the front of a hook. So that's 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 what the problem. Um, yeah, we can do Chris flies. Um, they do work. I, I have some here that I tied. Let me see. I think I have some or I sold them. I was supposed to go to French Guiana last November for some um, wolfish. And unfortunately, we didn't go because, uh, yeah, you know why. Uh, but I tied a bunch of those and uh, they're really nice. Um, these are kind of crease flies with, with a rattle built in inside. They're fairly simple. And... Uh, just some, um, the tail is made with some uh, synthetic uh, suede. Flap nicely, make a lot of noise. Uh, pike leaders, did we do a video of pike leaders? I think we did. Did we do a stream of pike leaders? Um, I can I can redo one anyway if you if you guys want. Or it won't take long to show you my leaders. My leaders are super simple for pike. So, all right. Salut Thierry, à la prochaine. Merci encore pour la donation. Yeah, my pike leaders are super simple. I don't... One thing I never complicate is uh, leaders for pike. Uh, I basically have about five 
down five to six foot of um, either way fluorocarbon or hard mono or amnesia in 30 to 40 pound and I link that to my bleeding wire in 30 pound and I link the two with a six turn Yucatan turn uh, but you don't need to do six turns about three to four turns is plenty because of the memory of the stainless steel and at the front I just put uh, either way a solid ring with split rings or a fast touch so depends where I fish but uh, pike leaders I keep them super simple and uh, only difference I do is a long leader when you fish floating to intermediate line and then as you start uh, getting sink line I'll drastically shorten them down to about three foot like so that's that's my leaders this super super simple um, but I can I can show you leaders next time no problem like not a bother All right, well, I think we're drying up. So guys, thank you very much again for joining me tonight. And like I said, if you want more stream, get on the Instagram and uh, or send me, a, send me a message. I'm more than happy to, to do some, um, some streams for you guys. So thank you again. I see a lot of uh, sub, uh, members now. I can see your, your, little, your little logo now beside you with the different colors. So that's uh, very much appreciated. It kind of give me a kick up the bum to keep going and doing that for you guys. So thank you very much. And uh, uh, yeah, tag some pictures and I'll see you next Friday. So remember, if you want uh, to be sure that a stream is coming up, click on the notification bell on the channel or check the community page on my page on the YouTube. Uh, I will post anything on that or on the Instagram if there's a stream coming up. So not to miss any. Uh, but I'm glad to see uh, quite a few viewers tonight because we've been away from the stream for quite some time. So it's good to see you guys back and enjoying it. So I'm going to clean up all that mess now and uh, cook a little bit of dinner and uh, might go fishing tomorrow. Aha. All right, guys. Thank you very much. Have a good evening. Have a great weekend and go out fishing. Send me pictures of your fish as well. And hope you have better luck and uh, catch more fish. Thank you, guys. And I'll see you probably next week if we get something uh, going. Thanks again. Thank you, Doc. Thank you, Kosh. Everybody, you guys rock. Thank you. Bye bye. <laughs>